Okay. In a typical newbie move, I thought you could only have one unit of Hive Guard back when they dominated the battlefield. I had an extra box after assembling six of them, and so rather than sell them, I decided for fun to assemble the alternate build available, which is the Tyrant Guard. I glued them with crushing claws because they looked great, and because they were going to be decorative pieces or included in a fluff list. Then. Along came Crusher Stampede, and I used them to defend my Swarmlord. They didn't make it across the battlefield, but all of that damage was spared the Swarmlord, who promptly went about dismantling the foe. And now, with the 9th edition Codex, the Hive Guard were nerfed, and then nerfed again with the Data Slate, making indirect fire even worse. Not that I'm bothered, plenty more bioforms to explore. Anyways. The Tyrant Guard are once again very, very useful. I've already used them in a game, and they not only made it across the battlefield this time, but got to ladle out some harm for a couple of rounds once they got there. And now, with Swarmlord getting a bunch more attacks, that makes them even more appealing. But Crushing Claws are a little expensive points-wise, and I also might want to field a few more of these Tyrant Guard if I bring in two Hive Tyrants. So I snagged another box, and this time, I'm going to try and magnetize after my efforts on the Hive Tyrant went so well. These are much smaller though, so let's see. I may have to bail and just pick a loadout and glue it in place. Magnets. Always with the magnets. I'm using the Magnet Soul Magnets Combo Pack for miniatures. There are 300 magnets in three sizes, and this time I'll be placing the medium size in the torso and the smallest size in the limbs. First up, let's get them out of the box and off the sprues. A pair of wire cutters gets them cut out, and then using an X-Acto knife at about 90 degrees to the model, I gently scraped away and smoothed out the mold lines. Next up, to erase the effects of my sweaty hands, I dropped them in a sieve, gave them a squirt of washing up liquid, and a light scrubbing before a thorough rinse. On to assembly. Clap the torso together, add legs to the tail, and drop the head in. They have a very distinct join along the chitin carapace. A little too small to warrant green stuff modeling clay, but the Mr. Dissolved Putty is just perfect. I grabbed an older brush, and dipping the tip in, got a small amount and gently painted it into the split. I let it dry, and then added another layer, and then a third, and then once all was truly dry, gave it a little rub with some fine grain sandpaper to get a nice smooth surface. I also used some more putty around the collar to make the join between the various segments a little more smooth. Then I realised I had screwed up. I had placed the normal lower arms on the model, the ones for the Hive Guard build, instead of the rending claws with that chitin buckler. The glue hadn't quite hardened yet, so I had time to spare so I could grab them and haul them out so I could add more glue and slot the correct big burly limbs into place. Next up, drilling. Easiest way to choose a drill bit size, take your magnets and drop them to the base of the bit to see if they fit. If the sides of the magnet are flush with the drill bit, you are good to go. I'm going to warm up with the medium sized magnets and go with drilling the torso holes first. If the fit is just a little small, a wiggle of the drill gets the extra width and ensures a superb fit. And then with a toothbrush, a little bit of a rub to get all the loose stuff and dust out of the hole and off the model. A dab of super glue in the hole, and then add the magnet, and if the hole ended up a bit too big, the back of a paintbrush to move it around and even it out works wonders. You only need to hold it until the super glue has become tacky. That's enough to keep it in place and stop it running away. Now, onto the limbs. I took an X-Acto and laid it to the ball that would otherwise be inserted into the torso socket cut away about a third of the whole dome, and then you can place the drill to the smooth surface and drill your hole. A bit of advice, place the limb to the torso and kind of gauge the pose you want, and then you can eyeball where to cut to get the flat edge so it meets the flat edge created by the torso magnet. I just cut one bone cleaver as a guess, 
and when I finished it, the only pose had it up against the tyrant guard's snout. Fortunately, I had others left over from when I made my hive guard, so it wasn't a problem. The small magnets are a lot more fiddly, so I started adding the dab of superglue, and because the pit is so small, there's a lot of excess. I wiped this excess away with a paper towel so that there's only a blob in the actual hole. Grabbing the column of small magnets, I broke away a queue of about four to six magnets and used them as a handle. First, to push at the torso magnet and make sure it repelled and wasn't attracted. With this direction confirmed, I inserted them into the limb and left them jutting out while it dried. Sometimes I had to prop it up to make sure the column stayed jutting straight up. Once the glue had hardened, I could grab the magnets and just remove all of them, leaving the single tiny magnet affixed in place. As I started to get into the groove, I then started using the column of magnets, pushing the first one in and then wiping aside so that once the inserted magnet is shed, I could keep wiping across with my thumbnail pressing to it. This stopped it being hauled out by the others or flipping over from the effects of attraction. With the small magnet in place, I could then just push the joint to the cutting board to press it into place and ensure a flush surface of plastic and magnet. Okay, a quick instrumental break as I sit back and congratulate myself on pulling this off. to work, placing the limbs along a metal ruler and a nice hosing down with Army Painter Black Primer. On to my Hive Fleet colours. The skin gets a nice layer of McCrag Blue, all the chitin gets Zerus Purple, and this can be a bit tricky to apply. There's lots of hard to reach places because of the lower limbs. Maybe I could have held off on adding the guard to the base, but the base is easier to take hold of and rotate around to help me paint it without constantly touching the model. Painting white scar in the mouths and gills and joints and then some Nylook Oxide technical paint to make them look all bioluminescent and glowy. I touched up the blue when the brush slipped out of the valley in which the gill resides and then a wash of null oil. I made sure it didn't flood the areas of Nylook Oxide so these areas end up with a minor accent rather than ending up as a dark pit. I then left them to dry head down so that the null oil settles in the overlapping edges of the chitin plates. Once dry, I started painting Imric Blue Dry on the ends of the bone cleavers, the lash whip, the scything talons, the crushing claws, and the tails. Every time I did this, the process of applying a solid hue sheds just enough paint to get the dry brush into spot-on condition, to dry brush the jawline, the ribs, the legs, and all the limbs. I repeated the same process, but this time with Ethereum Blue Dry, and a little lighter application to get a nice gradient, so from McCrag to Imric to Ethereum. And then a dry brush of Jean Steeler Purple on the chitin, focusing on the edges and the areas of battle damage. Now, I opted to use one of the rending talons that was holding the sundered Space Marine helm. I could have left it looking all ultramarine with the blue, I mean, it is McCrag blue after all, but I had just listened to the Adeptus Ridiculous on the Imperial Fists, and inspired, I decided to go with those yellow colors. To improvise, I used Army Painter Angelic Yellow as a base coat and Dragonfire Red for the Aquila and the eyepiece. Gave it a light wash of Nuln Oil and then a dry brush of Flash Gits Yellow and a final very, very light dry brush of White Scar on the edges. Hey, so I guess I just did my first Space Marine paint job. And while the pot of White Scar was open, a tiny dry brush touch of White Scar on the very tips of the Tyrant Guard weapons and some touches on the main beastie as well. Now let's finish this up. The small weld slate and stone. 
I glued a couple of quarter inch pieces to the bases and also glued down the power armor leftovers. And then a squeeze of Elmer's glue that I wiped around with a brush and then sprinkled on some eighth inch slate, pushed it down to ensure it's embedded, let it dry, and then held it upside down and gave it some taps to shed the loose stuff back into the container. And a final touch, dipping a nail into some Weldwood contact cement, which is seriously starting to stodge up on me. But that means it's almost in perfect condition to just apply and manipulate straight off with no more lengthy weights. I added a blob at the waist and another blob at the neck, blew on it for a few moments out of habit and then used the nail to stretch strands of gore up to the neck of the helmet and out across the rocks. A quick look online. And the Hemostamen blood maker is the fourth gene seed organ implanted in a space marine. And it manufactures the Laramon cells that are massively more efficient blood cells that clot quicker, carry more oxygen, and turn an injury into a scar in seconds. They are also the reason Astarte's blood is so much brighter. Interesting. Okay, so this time I'm going to step away from my usual corn red gore effects that I guess mean I've just been carving up the Imperial Guard for my bases all this time. So I applied a layer of Army Painter Dragonfire Red. Wow, that's bright, but then so is the blood it's supposed to represent. So if I use Null Oil, it'll darken it. So maybe to preserve the inhuman look, sorry, transhuman look in nature, I'll try a wash of the Lupus Pink Contrast Paint. Nice! And once everything is dry, a squirt of army painter varnish from every angle, and a bit of a longer squirt from above onto the slate stone, and the same on the limbs as they remain accessible from every angle, from being magnetically clipped to the ruler. Once it's dry, a second quick coat, and here we have my tyrant guard. The bioform is highly adaptable, and in addition to its rending claws, it is capable of being armed with scything talons, or these creatures can be grown with a lash whip and a bone cleaver. Or, of course, mighty and dreadful crushing claws. 